All right. So after this story, it'll be snack time. And this is the story of Jumping Mouse. And Jumping Mouse is a story from the Native American tradition. You may have heard it before. And it's one of those stories that um, explains a phenomenon. You know, just like when they heard ancient people heard thunder, they knew that there were gods up there making that noise, beating on big drums or whatever they imagined. When they looked up at the stars, they imagined something. And when they looked up at the at the um, sun, they imagined a they imagined that there's you know lots of being lighting the world up and making the world a good place to live right so this story i'm just gonna that's just my introduction i'm gonna just tell the story now but i'd love to hear what you want to say after okay will you hold that thought yeah. okay and even today we we understand the world differently but we have a understanding of the world and that's how we understand it it's kind of vague story of jumping mouse there's a real mouse called a jumping mouse and it, it so this is a, one of the stories that explains um, how that happened but it's also a story about a journey and so many stories of the world you will hear are about a journey even the first story I told Anansi when he goes up to the heavens to get the stories it was a journey wasn't it and he had things that he had to do didn't he Anansi he had to conquer the leopard and the hornets and the mysterious fairy who people never see all these things that have to happen on a journey and what happened at the end some great thing right all the stories of the world became a real real thing so this is a many stories are like that this one is no exception so once there was a little mouse and he lived among all the other mice and they were always busy looking for seeds and making nests and doing all the little things that mice do. Listening, whiskers twitching, nibbling things, sneaking around, rushing around, watching out for the things that might want to eat them for lunch. Like all kinds of things. And this little mouse kept thinking that he heard something. Can you, don't scrape the gravel with your shoes, please. He kept hearing this noise, this like roaring sound in the back of his thinking. Okay, so please sit up. Please sit up. Thank you. I need you not to play with the rocks while I'm telling the story. Okay. So he kept hearing this mysterious sound. And he would ask his mice friends, do you hear that? What is that noise? They would be like, what are you talking about? We don't hear anything. We don't notice that. But he kept, couldn't get it out of his mind. And so one day he sort of crept toward that roaring noise. And suddenly he heard a voice behind him. Hello, little brother. Looked up and there was Sister Raccoon. Sister Raccoon, oh, how are you? Yes, I am curious about something. What are you doing, said Sister Raccoon. Well, I hear this funny noise that I can't get out of my mind. No one else seems to hear it. It's just this roaring noise. It's always the same and yet always changing. How could that be? The raccoon said, oh, I know what that is. That's the river. What is a river, the mouse said. I'll show you. I go to the river every day to wash my food, said the raccoon. So the raccoon waddled his way over, her way over to the river with a curious little mouse jumping behind. And on the way to the river, the mouse smelled all kinds of new smells and saw different plants and was very amazed that the world was so different than he had always imagined it from his surroundings. So he gets to the river and he sees this amazing thing. It's like a living being, kind of like a god itself, but just moving and changing and crying and singing and doing all this stuff, making all this noise. He couldn't believe it. He was scared of it, but he was fascinated by it. At the same time, he was like, wow, no one will ever believe it. I've got to go back to the mice and tell them about it. Raccoon said, well, I should stay a while and look at it some more. Find out more about it before you go back. And the mouse said, well, I don't know. I guess so. And the raccoon said, well, I got to go. But Frog here will care for you while you're by the river. Who's that? Mouse said, oh, look. How could you be out there in the river? Aren't you afraid? And the frog said, no, no. I was born with this gift of being able to live under the water and over the water. And while the thunderbird flies, I live in the water. But then 
when the icy winds come and everything freezes, I burrow myself so far down in the mud and I slow my heart rate so low that nobody would even know I was there and I stay there asleep until the spring comes. And the frog said, hmm, would you like some medicine power? Medicine is a word that the native people used for like strength and power. Want some medicine? It's like having a superpower. Oh, yes, I, I would like, I would like some medicine, some medicine power. And Frog says, okay, here's what you're going to do. You're going to jump as high as you can, as far as you can. Ready, set, go. So the mouse said, okay. And he jumped as far as he could. And it's up in the air. He saw something amazing. He saw mountains which he never knew existed. He looked in far in the distance. He saw these sacred, beautiful mountains. And he comes back down and splash into the water. Ah! It's so afraid, scurries out of the water, swims, didn't know he could even swim. And the, the frog said, ah, how was that? What? You tricked me! I'm afraid of the water! Why would you do that to me? No, no. What did you see when you were up there? Wow. I did see something amazing. I saw mountains. The frog said, aha, the sacred mountains. You saw them, did you? Look at your tail. And sure enough, as the jumping mouse looked back, he saw his tail had grown like almost double the length and his back legs became even stronger. And now he was, frog said, you have a new name. You're not just mouse anymore. You're jumping mouse. The so jumping mouse said, wow, thank you for this medicine. This is amazing. i got to go back and tell my friends. Okay, said the frog. Go ahead. That's what you want to do. Mouse said, okay, I'll go back. Jumping mouse goes back and finds that he can jump way farther than he used to. He can jump three times the length. And he uses his tail for balance and comes back to his friends. His friends are like, what's the matter with you? Why are you wet? Did some dog spit you out or something? You must be poisonous. You better stay away from us. Jumping Mouse said, no, you won't believe it. I saw the great river and I saw something else, the sacred mountains far up, far in the distance. The mice said, I don't know. That's crazy talk. Don't bother us with that. No, no, you have to see. Come check it out. Come to the river. And the frog gave me a new name, Jumping Mouse. And they're like, what? Get away. You're crazy. We can't have you around here anymore. You got that long tail that's scary to us so jumping mouse went back to the river after a couple of days of being sad and lonely and feeling like all his friends had deserted him because he had some different ideas and he went back to the river and frog said well why are you back said, well i don't know no one wants me around anymore and the sacred mountains are seen i can't get them out of my mind and Frog says, well, why don't you go? Oh, no, that's too far away. How could I possibly go to the Sacred Mother? That's so far away. I wouldn't even know how to get there. And um, the Frog said, well, you just have to start by crossing the river. The mouse said, how in the world can I do that? And Frog said, I can help you. He said, get on that leaf. And Frog took the leaf in his mouth and swam, jumping Mouse right across the river and left him there. Well, this is as far as I go, said jumping, said the, said frog, said sister frog. That's as far as I go. That's all the medicine I can give you for now. Yeah. I made her back into a sister. Yeah. Yeah, I think I might have said it was a boy before, but I forgot it's a girl. So, says goodbye, sister frog. Thank you for the, my new name and for the traveling, but I don't know where to go now. Just watch out for the spots in the sky which can come down and eat you for lunch and you make your way across so jumping mouse jumped and everything he saw was new every place he went was new everything around him was different it was exciting and scary he got all the way to a place where the gr grass extends for miles and miles and miles and couldn't see any more couldn't see any more uh, river and couldn't see any more trees and there, where the grasses open out, he saw this enormous thing that he'd never seen before, a giant, hairy being of some sort. And he thought, what is that? Who are you? And it sighed. 
<laughs> Something's wrong with that giant mouse or whatever it is, said Jumping Mouse and said, hello. And it turned out it was buffalo, a giant buffalo. Do you know what a buffalo is, second graders? Yeah. Buffalo, if you don't know, looks is, in the, is a cousin to the cows, but it's really big and it's very, very big, strong front front muscles. His shoulders are so enormous and he's got horns. Well, cows have horns too. And big, fuzzy, furry, longer hair. And there's wandered all through the, the world, all through the country for so many years. It's wandered everywhere. And they were the main source of meat and skin and warmth for all the native people. So here this buffalo was clearly sick. And the buffalo said, well, who are you? And Jumping Mouse said, I'm Mouse. I mean, Jumping Mouse. And I'm trying to make my way to the sacred mountains. The buffalo said, ah, that is nice. I, however, am dying. Mouse said, oh, what is it that you need? What's wrong? And Buffalo said, well, I'm blind. I cannot see as I used to see, and I cannot find the herd can hear them, but I can't really find them. I can't graze for grass, and I'm just dying because I'm not of much use with no eyesight. I was told that a magical medicine called Eye of a Mouse could help, and I hear that you are a mouse. That is interesting, that you would come here. And Mouse looked at this enormous, beautiful beast with all this deep, furry hair, and said, well, I am cold. May I sleep in your fur this night? Of course you may. And as Jumping Mouse lay in the bu warm fur of the buffalo, he said, you know, I have an eye. I have two eyes. I can give one eye to buffalo. I would like to give one eye to buffalo. And just as he said that, magically, an eye, his eye came out and went into the buffalo. And the buffalo <clears throat> snorted, <clears throat> stood up, and, <clears throat> oh, thank you. You gave me your eye, little mouse. And now I am can be of use again, be of use to the people. I'm giver of meat to the people, me and all of my cousins and, and relations. Jumping Mouse, where did you say you are going? I'm going to the sacred mountains. Well, you cannot go across these grasslands or the eagles will eat you. But if you travel underneath me, I will take you to the foot of the sacred mountains. So. Jumping Mouse, with his one eye, jumped underneath the shadow of the buffalo, and no eagles could see him from in that shadow. So he jumped and followed the buffalo all the way to the edge of the sacred mountains. And there he said, I must leave you here, but good luck on your journey. So Jumping Mouse found a little place to sleep, curled up, and next morning he saw a wolf. And the wolf Clearly, something was wrong with a wolf. And the mouse came up and said, What's wrong with you, O wolf? And the wolf said, Well, oh, wolf, that's what I am, a wolf, a wolf, that's right. And the mouse said, Oh, something's wrong with him. I always forget what I am. My memory is gone, and my sense of smell is gone. And Jumping Mouse said, You know, what a beautiful creature this wolf is, and how sad it is that it doesn't know who it is and can't smell anymore to hunt. I have some magic, I think. I have some magic left. I gave my eye to Buffalo, and Buffalo could see again and live again. And I would like to give you my eye. Maybe it will help you. He was so inspired to help this beautiful wolf. So he, as soon as he said that, his other eye came out and went into the wolf. And the wolf said, oh, I know who I am again. Thank you for that powerful medicine, little mouse. What did you say you were doing? Where are you going? Oh, my name is Jumping Mouse, and I'm going to the Sacred Mountains. And the wolf said, Wow, you're blind now. How will you make it there? I know. You can cling to my fur. I will take you to the Sacred Mountains, a place up in the Sacred Mountains where there is a lake where no one ever goes. No, but it reflects the sky and the people, the people's lodges. Only the people that live up there go there. I'll take you there. So... He clung to the wolf's fur, and he brought him all the way up to this, up into the sacred mountains, up, 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 up. And again, all the sights, all the plants, everything was different every step of the way. 
Jumping Mouse couldn't see anything else, but he could smell all the smells of the mountains, totally different than the smells of the forest and the river and the fields where he'd lived before. He got all the way to the very top of the mountain, and there he was left. And Mouse, oh, I've made it my goal. I'm here, and yet I can't see. I'll surely die any minute. So he thought, well, I guess an eagle will just take me. He sniffed here, sniffed there, and sure enough, eagle, hit! Jumping Mouse fell asleep. And then he woke up. Where was he? He was there, the sacred mountain with the beautiful sacred lake. And things were blurry, but colors began showing in his eyes. He began seeing color and then shapes. And then he heard a voice. Jumping Mouse, you've made it so far. It was Sister Frog's voice, but he couldn't see her anywhere. Sister Frog, are you here? Jumping Mouse, you've made it. I have one more medicine gift for you. One more power to send you. Jump high again, Jumping Mouse. Jump as high as you can. Jump as high as you can, as far as you can. Jump, Jumping Mouse. And Jumping Mouse jumped into the air and felt like he was floating. And his nose and whiskers became a beak, a sharp yellow beak. And his little feet back feet became talons and his front legs became amazing giant wings. Eagle! You are Eagle! That is your new name! And he flew and he flew and he flew and lived there in the sacred mountains to the end of his days. His eyes became the sharp eyes of an eagle that can see farther and longer and sharper than almost any other creature. That's right. So it is and so it was and so it shall be. This is my story which I have related. Nope, nope. This is my story which I have related. Be it sweet or be it not sweet. Take some away.